Hey, Space Lab, Michael from Vsauce here to answer more of your questions about space. Our first question comes from Blue Star 160 who asked, what is the closest livable planet to Earth? Well, livable, if we're allowed to build bases or structures on other planets, we could live as close as our next door neighbor, Mars. But without special life supporting structures or bases, we're going to have to look for a special type of Earth-like planet, a planet with liquid water. And planets that have liquid water are gonna have to be just close enough to the sun to be warm, but not so warm that the water wouldn't be liquid. They have to be in a special zone around their star known as a habitable zone. And we found a few planets like this. One is called Kepler-22b. This planet is 600 light years away, but it might be fun because the planet is about two and a half times heavier than Earth, which means its gravity is that much stronger, and being on the planet would make you weigh two and a half times more, so you would totally feel fat. So instead, let's look at a more recently discovered planet, exoplanet GJ1214b. We're still trying to learn more about what's in this planet, but it lives in that habitable zone away from its star, and it might possibly be a water world. But I want something closer, and for that we should look at a certain cluster only 20 light years away from Earth. What's funny is that this cluster will help answer the next question from Sword and Board 82, who asked us if it's really possible for a message sent 40, 50, 60 years ago to have reached other places. Well, here's the neat thing. A message from Earth was a real message sent out into space at this cluster 20 light years away. The message was composed of personal messages from people with Bebo accounts, and it was sent in 2008. So conceivably, if anything gets this message from Earth, they could respond as soon as 2048, 20 light years one way, 20 light years back. On Vsauce, I've covered other types of messages we've sent into space, but those messages were physical messages left on records or pieces of metal, and they don't travel nearly as fast as a radio signal, which travels at the speed of light. Our third question, as usual, is the most thumbed up question from the last video. L Campy 10 asked, what is the space-time continuum? Well, answering that question is going to take forever, so instead I will use one word. The space-time continuum is fun. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Continuum is one of those great words like the word vacuum, where you get to have a double U, but no double U. But seriously, the space-time continuum, in a nutshell, is just a mathematical model, a way of thinking about the universe that incorporates the three dimensions of length and height and width, along with time. Before Einstein came around with his relativity, we didn't need to think about the universe as a space-time continuum. Instead, it was fine to just think about the space part, because all the physical interactions occurring around us experienced time in the same way. But what Einstein showed and experiments later proved was that the faster you go, the more differently you experience time than you did before you were moving. In fact, if you were to approach speeds near the speed of light, you would feel fine, but to someone else not moving that fast looking at you, you would appear to be going incredibly slowly. Time would be different for you than for them. You could leave Earth in a fast moving rocket ship near the speed of light and come back after what you thought was only a day, only to find out that 10,000 years had passed on Earth. It's a crazy thought, but the nuttiest part is that technically, if you were able to go faster than the speed of light, there's no reason you wouldn't go backwards in time. The space-time continuum model was a consequence of Einstein's ideas, but it was actually Einstein's old mathematics teacher, Hermann Minkowski, who first developed the model. As always, leave your space questions below in the comments or leave me a video response, those are super fun. And also keep in mind that I am obligated to answer the most thumbed up question, no matter what it is. The Space Lab regional winners were announced. You can go check them out right here. Be sure to subscribe to Space Lab for more, and as always, thanks for watching.